I want to see. Everything's up? Okay. Okay, so um, uh, quick uh, introduction. I'm Steve Ross today. I work for uh, VMware, and um, they were kind enough to give me full time employees. You're going to be one of them. And I made a comment, just so it's recorded, I'll make a comment that I said to uh, you I said, this is why we don't develop the kernel in C++, because to do so all the time it takes to build something small. Uh, it seems to have like exponential rate of doing that. So I'm one of the pushers, push back on everything in C, not C++. I don't like C++. Um, I have to develop in C++. Anyway, this is uh, slightly similar to what Yordan talked about, but um, going back into more of the core code, because a uh, kernel shark uses to interact with uh, the tracing data from Linux, uh, uses what we have, um, which is ftrace, and the uh, uh, interface is ftrace. So, um, if you've been watching daily lists at all, uh, you probably noticed uh, Sotomi over here has been sending patches. Actually, he sends it to me, and I send them, and I send them out sooner. He'll be just sending straight himself. But um, we're working on cleaning things up within the Linux kernel, uh, the, the tracing parsing I'm going to talk about, uh, to make it so it's useful for more people. It would be helpful if I actually turn this on. And plug it in. There. So, first, let's trace it. Um, how many people here uh, write or write interfaces to the Linux kernel for tracing? Okay. So, if you want to use the trace events that are within the kernel, I know LTT kind of has their own ways of uh, getting that data out and making its own format, but if you go into um, slash sys, slash kernel, slash tracing, slash debug, or sorry, slash tracing, you don't need to be debug, but actually sys kernel tracing uh, events, you'll see a bunch of files there that explain how the trace events write their data in binary to the uh, um, ring buffer. And the trace events uh, format file explains how to read this because ideally, you know, when we first wrote uh, ftrace, um, we had a trace file that just gave you ASCII data. And anyone here that's done any serious tracing knows that that's not quite efficient for when you want to do fast tracing, especially on production systems. And you want to save that data and analyze that data. Having that in ASCII and parsing it is not the best way of always doing everything. So we made it so we could access the ring buffers, first the person view ring buffers, so we actually to get the raw data, we had to actually access some person view. So you would have to have some reading mechanism to read the data directly. So you hook up to the ring buffers and read the data directly from um, the kernel and put them into a file. And now you have all raw data. But the question is, we have binary data. We don't know. It's not very easy for us to read it if we don't know how what they mean. So we came up with a way of reading, uh, creating a library to tell us, and a format using read the format file to, to say, hey, I can read these format files and then be able to um, uh, parse this raw data. PowerTop uses it. Perf uses it. Trace may use it. And MC Utils, I think they started to use it. I don't know if they still use it. Uh, but many other people want to use it because I keep getting questions asked, how do I read the binary data? People ask me that. And I said, well, there's this library. I said, we're, we're, I don't see it in Fedora. Right? Because it's not there. Why not? We're trying to solve that answer. So, basically, we have, so the problem with making it into a library is it's not ready. I mean, I wrote it. I wanted it to be in a library. I orchestrated all the code to be ready for a library, but just encapsulating all the code is not good enough to be a library. A library has an API. And my API I kind of had, I didn't really think too much on it because I was too much busy trying to make it working than actually thinking about naming conventions. And I have I've used some generic names, like event format, record. So if you have struct record, that's not going to fly very well if someone blinks their code because they might use struct record. I mean, that's a very common name. That's not something I want to steal from anyone. So the trace map format file looks like this. Um, it explains to you. Uh, this is the sketch switch event. So if you enable the sketch switch event and write it in uh, uh, the binary data, you want to read how to read it, uh, you read this file. And the first few, uh, the first fields uh, are the common fields from all trace events that are in ftrace and perf. Uh, you will find these in anything. And the lib trace event knows about these and says, okay, I know these are trace events. 
And I kind of wish I had changed this file, I could change this file because this is kind of waste. There's no reason to read this part of the file for every single event because it's the same in every event. So it's kind of a waste, but this is what we did. And since it's an API now, and I can't change it without breaking all the tools, uh, it's there, it's stuck. So in that space behind, or after that common PID is the different of, is where the common uh, fields are separated from, or all the uh, unique fields per the events. So the type, flags, path count, and common PID, that's common for everyone, but, and that's a way to access it. You know, when you link to, or link to the trace event, and you want an event, you can always get these, you know you can get the common um, fields. The rest of these are the fields that are unique to the actual event. They are different for every single event. Uh, obviously, not every event's going to have a previous common index common and all that. And finally, the fun part begins is when you start, this is, the bottom one is a C statement. This is actually the code that's actually used within the kernel. The kernel actually, read, this is actually written, and I use macros to be able to extract what the kernel uses to print out that pre-print ASCII. So I pass this up, and I, I have a way of replacing enums with actual numbers. That's why you see those zeros and ones and everything. Those are actually macros that got um, expanded into what you would have done if you compiled with like dash capital E and then replace all N, uh, enums to actual letter numbers. Because uh, you know we don't. Um, if I read this from user space and if there's an enum, I have no access to know what that number is from user space what the kernel thinks it is. So I actually had to make sure that when I exported it, we got to see it. But this is what our parser has to parse to be able to read. So, parsing this file, I wrote it by hand, um, makes it hard to maintain, makes it hard to be correct. In fact, a uh, friend just told me that, hey, did you see the bug report yesterday? I said, no. And I'm like, oh crap, there's a bug report in the parsing algorithm. Uh, it's hard to modify when I want to change something um, because I wrote it in my hand, it doesn't work that fast. So, right now, so here is test with um, using replacing it to flex it by um, So we can have so it makes it you know easier to maintain, more robust, easier to modify, easier to understand. Anyone else can come in. People who here has used flex and replace on the streets. So this will make it for you people that have already used it. You'll be able to jump in and you hey join our community. So you can come in and help with us too. So once we get that done, uh, the problem is. It's hard to get right the first time. That strange space and everything, it's kind of a weird format. And also, the hardest part is that this basically has to be a full C partial. Because remember this? That could be any C code, as long as it doesn't call functions or anything. But that could be anything that C can do right there. So you have to have basically a full C type parser to be able to parse that last line. So getting it into a library format, first thing we did was we got to work on namespace. And, um, okay. The namespace, uh, we rename, rename everything. First thing, I used to call everything PIA, parsing event. And I sent out lots of little uh, notes or on Google Plus, for those that know what that is. It may not be around anymore. I'm sad. Anyway, I did a uh, survey and I tried, came up with a bunch of things like what do we want to actually call this thing because it can't be P event because people hate it. I actually like P event, but no one else did. So we finally came up with, I needed one, I want something small because I didn't want to take too much. So we came up with TEP, which stands for trace event parser. So all, TEP is now our, is going to be the namespace thing. So we're reading everything, records going to be TEP underscore record. Event format will be TEP events because actually in that event format, it actually meant really just an event. And it made things complex because like events field, was actually based off of the event format. So I wanted it to be kind of hierarchical. So I say tap event field instead of tap event format field. And like I said, I don't like to take much. Um, so now everything starts with tap. Now also, um, but sorry, Mayor, um, he's, he's here to be honest. This is the part I don't understand very well. Uh, he, he's like, we gotta make it work with autoconf. And I, I don't like autoconf. Uh, I've always avoided it. Uh, I've never actually figured out how to get that done right, but he's actually working on making sure that you know you have the same packaging and fake file. So, um, so <clears throat> we're going to add this, or actually, we already have a patch to add this to um, the trace map to make sure that, or when you build this, 
you can actually package it or you know, it uh, has all the tools so when you link to it or uh, you know, if you run AutoConf, it will be able to detect the, uh, the trace map. So this is where I'm, I'm, I'm just trusting Sedemir because I have no idea what's going on. He says, this is how you do it. Okay. So if you see patches with AutoConf come through, even though I'm signed off by and reviewed it, that was meaningless because I have no idea what he's talking about. So if you want to look at that code too, please give me Man pages. This is the next thing we have to do. Um, what we're doing is every, since we're making it to a library, to use this, it has to be well documented. We have lots and lots of man pages. This is just the first, um, the first crack at it. I told a study to go and um, uh, try to group them. And, and I think it brought, how many times did you break it up? Into? For 14 packages, or 14 pages, we grouped up into 14 pages because uh, this is, by the way, only was a snapshot of the first of the long thing. So I couldn't, I couldn't make it fit. If I were to put it all in there, it would look like a tiny little dot because there's over 100 functions and each one needs to be uh, documented. Uh, Mike here, here is um, here, here today. I saw him this morning. He's the uh, man page, or he's the Linux. You know, system call man page maintainer. And I talked with him about it, and he, I said, well, how should I package it up? You know, how many should I put? 14, 5? And he said, no more than 2. I'm like, okay, that's over 50 man pages. If we do it, divide by 2, that's going to be over 50 man pages. But he said mostly 1. It says 2, 3, if they're actually closely, closely tied. There's a lot of overlap, and only one whole thing is like different. Like, you know, like, you have like uh, S printf, S n printf, that close. You know, to be to, to do this. So there's going to be lots of man pages going into the kernel, and we're looking at putting it into uh, the trace event documentation. Um, we need to vet each one. Uh, Mary removed several of the APIs because this is going to be an API. And my biggest criticism of GTK, the reason why we went to Qt, was because GTK can't keep up its mind with what an API is. And I, uh, Kershark was working on GTK2, uh, which is going to be obsolete soon. And when GTK3 came out, I was like, that's almost a full rewrite for me. And I don't have the time, I don't have the energy to rewrite, because I, I wanted to add a lot more functionality to Kershark. I didn't want to spend my time just making it work with the, the library that I wrote everything to. So to me, I'm like, ah, because I don't want to rewrite it again when GTK4 comes out. Q is much more stable, and it keeps its API. Solid. So that's my criticism of GTK and why we made Curl Shark use Q. The I don't want to be that person to be a hypocrite and not use something and then do the exact same thing and change my API when I feel it's better. But to do that it takes work. So people ask me, uh, is it ready? You have everything, you have the namespaces there, the packaging is done. So when's it going to become a library? I'm like, well, after we vet every single function call. Or yeah. Uh, the man pages, when we write the man pages, we're going to be vetting every single thing to make sure that's uh, something that we say, okay, does this really need it? Is this something that we're going to be using in the future? How can it change in the future? Can we make, make it extensible um, so we can add new features and be able to detect, have old code? So I never want, I, if you write something on, once we release that library, if you write that, if you write code for that library, I want your, your code to work for that library on all versions of that library. Now, if you write it for a new version, it may not work for the old version. I would, I'll try to make it do so. That is how you write the code. But if you write your code for uh, libtrace event version 1, it should work for libtrace event version 99. So that's my theory. It may break over, but that's the last resort. So that, but to do that correctly is very, very hard. I'm sure <laughs> everyone here who's ever done APIs, you never get it right. So, as you just saw, you already talked about Kernel Shark. And Kernel Shark has an interface to, lib, or to the trace command, which is the, uh, uh, what's it called? It's the uh, command line to uh, ftrace, which talks about trace, it creates trace that file. So Kernel Shark actually executes, it actually basically does basically trace command calls in to start ftrace. So you can hit record, it'll come up, you can type in your root password, it records, and then it's ftrace, creates a trace that file, goes back into uh, Kernel Shark. But in actuality, it doesn't use trace command, it uses a library. So trace command actually has its own library. And it uses libtraceEvent.so. So we're going to get this packaged together for libtraceEvent.so. But also, everything 
thing that you do in Trace Command, I will also make it in library. Uh, curl Shark, as Gordon said, is a shell around lib Shark. What I'm trying to do is make uh, Trace Command a shell around Trace Command. And well, you know what? I, there's a historical reason why it's called Trace CMD. I hate that name. I wanted to change it. It, I, it was a prototype for something else, and I needed to push it further, but then people started taking it, and it kind of got farther, and then when I wanted to rename it, it was too late. People had this in their scripts. Because I said, hey, we, I even put Google Plus polls. What do you want to call it? You know, we call it Trout. You know, Carl Shark eats Trout. Um, there's like, no one that's um, But no, or T-Trace, or K-Trace, or all these other things. And then what it came down to was, leave it alone, it's in my scripts. That was the number one answer. <coughs> so I'm like, darn it, I hate that. But I'm not going to make it a uh, second, I'm not going to make that mistake twice. So it's going to be called the F-Trace. Or, yeah, I think the web trace is fine because it deals with F trace. It's this way it creates the I'm going to say screw it, call it trace. Even if it doesn't do work with web, uh, F trace, I just like F trace name much, much better than you know, trace command. So, web trace is what we call it. Of course, we all already talked about the kernel shell. So, basically, everything you're doing here, you can do with your own tools. If you use Rebels libraries and you can write tools and you can kind of modify everything yourself. So, I want all this to be done for everyone, not just us. So, you take these three libraries, put them together, and we're going to come and get ourselves a tracing platform. So ideally, this is similar to what you just saw in your notes. I want to be able to everything here, tracing man, LTG, uh, perf. I want all you guys to work together and have a trace platform. So what we're going to do, we get this uh, tracing platform. Yeah, I don't know why I want to that. And so what about um, <clears throat> adding the perf? So, because I will, I will love it so that everything you do in perf, you don't need perf. That was one reason why I never really worked hard with perf, because perf is very monolithic. It's to, it basically, if you want a functionality in perf, you actually have to add your functionality and give it to perf and become part of the perf ecosystem. I'm totally against that. I think it should be the other way around. This is open source, it's a way we should merge. Products shouldn't be uh, controlling everyone else. It should be giving up. I, it's, it's kind of ironic that I wrote F-Trace in a way that's very, very modular. I, you know, Matthew knows this, I worked very hard to make sure that the trace of infrastructure worked with LTTNG, which was kind of funny because that's what Perf was able to access it. And then they wanted me to make it into, you know, have Perf take over. I'm like, wait a minute, no, I'm modularizing everything. Uh, the rate buffer is all separate. Um, and so all the function, the function tracer within Perf, within uh, F-Trace, LTTNG could use the infrastructure for how to trace the kernel in there. I didn't make it. I always try to modulize everything. Live kernel patching uses F-Trace's functionality to work. I'm always into, let's make everything work for everyone else. Let's make a platform. Let's make the functionality. Let's make APIs. So people can take what they want and make a new tool. Because I believe you guys are the ones that are creative, not me. I just want to get the infrastructure. I want you guys to be able to have your Create, be creative to come up with what you want for your problems. But have, just take the right tool for the right job. There's certain things that LTTNG was better for, there's certain things after it's better for, there's certain things perfs better for. And if you have a mixture of those, wouldn't it be great to just say, let me take a little here, a little here, a little here, and put it together. This solves my problem. Not that I may be the only one that has this problem, but now I have something that I can create that is good for me using everyone else's work. So, maybe a little bit of LTTNG in place. And heard all the functionality coming to the kernel. And we work. So I think that, you know, Matthew's um, team's been doing, we could use. What about the D-Trace? There's uh, Oracle has published it under, I believe, the GPL2 kernel, or maybe the other GPL or something. We can get this involved. So that is my vision. Discussion. Questions? Any questions? I knew you'd be the one to ask this question. <laughs> Maybe I won't ask the questions that you're thinking about. No, it's always something different. Okay. Uh, so how, when you created a library, how are you doing test coverage-wise? Unit tests, percentages? The library is not done yet. <laughs> so, I have a bunch of tests for tracing. I have a series of tests. 
I was supposed to, before I got here, I was supposed to push up to the Git tree for my team to start using the tests. I use it, they sent me code and I run my tests to test it. But they're like, could you give us the tools that you test? So I've actually created a Git repo that has all the tools, the things I do to make sure that it's backward compatible. I have ways of taking, I've actually, you have to, the hard part about my test suite is I have all these things manually done and like I have old versions of trace command that I make sure, it could, like I'll write a data file, I'll make sure the old trace command will read that data file from the new, like on the new trace command will write the data file, the old one will read it and make sure that I match, make sure, does this match correctly? So um, I do things like that, so I make, I, I, that's my test suite sort of does backward compatibilities, it does a few tracing tests that I can, the funny part is my, my test suite has actually found more bugs in F-trace than in trace suite. So, that's, that's the only question I have, but we do plan on having some things. So, do you want contributions for like unit tests on the CAPI level? Uh, for like the man page side? Um, like, what I mean, like the like API like unit, trace unit test suites. Yeah, once we, like I said, the libraries aren't there yet. But, yes, please. That's something I, I would be, I would love that. Other questions? Well, I have one. Okay. Um, so you talked about the LTTNG part uh, with battle tricks that we've been working oh. for years now. Yes, I was. I want to add that yeah. because a lot of what you presented as goals against stable uh, APIs. This is one goal we have for battle tricks too. Uh, RC one is not not done yet. We have input plugins. It can be used as a library and everything. So have you considered using battle tricks as a platform? And in, Integrate. Well, I thought about this was more the, the trans, translation. So actually, when I go, actually going back to this, I actually well, I was I talked to them about Bible Trace with my team here, and actually that underneath I was going to be ideally I would kind of put here the Bible Trace. We were thinking about like, I we haven't looked fully into it yet. So yes, it's on my radar. It's the thing we're doing. It's just right now I'm trying to just organize. Because bubble trace can be used as a trace converter, as you were saying, but it can also be used to uh, replace directly lib trace in the test. So everything you want to do there, bubble trace does it. So you just need to, need to, to create an input plugin, a source plugin. Yeah, well, lib, what we have to look at is lib trace and have so that's actually the one thing that's probably the most common. Okay. Well, and it's in the kernel. I mean, I can take a look at it. Maybe we'll just bring it in and then merge the two. Because we've got, before we do RC1, if you have feedback to give us and yes. we need to improve the API, it's, now it's fine. Okay. Yeah, that's, for me, that's, that's your job. Any other questions? Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you.